We're going to change it up. Uh, often people would like to see more than just presentations and interaction. So we're going to have three uh, distinguished people come up, one at a time, of course. Uh, the first one I'd like to introduce is Cristiano Alman. Cristiano is the CEO of Qualcomm. And just to put in a plug for Qualcomm, they have been big supporters, not only of GSMA, but they have been big supporters of our industry and certainly GTI for many, many years. And it's a pleasure to continue our relationship. And Cristiano has been uh, kind enough uh, to come up and chat with me uh, and cover some ground that is interesting both to Qualcomm and to GTI. So, Cristiano, if you would come up, I'd love to see you. Thank you again. Thank you for your guys. Now, in fairness to everybody, I, I have shared with Cristiano the areas in which I want to cover. So he, he may have some slides which will help um, uh, highlight some of the comments he wants to make. So he, he is aware of this. Um, my job is not to surprise him. Um, Cristiano, um, Qualcomm obviously is one of the leading players in almost everything this industry has gone through from, from CDMA days, 2G, and, and up through 5G. And now you're in this seat. You've watched all the developments that have gone on. What, what do you think are the key trends today? Um, and take us at least for the next couple years. No, absolutely. I think, first of all, Greg, happy to be here. Thank you all for the opportunity uh, to speak with you. Look, we're very passionate about this industry. And I think I will go back a little bit in time to answer your question. You know, when, when we all started on this journey, it was about connecting people. And uh, when we look at where we are right now, uh, there is a fundamental role of the sector in the mobile networks, which is about connecting everything. When you look of the role of the network in digital transformation, in general, there is no economic conversation right now that does not involve technology and digital transformation of the enterprises. And I think we went from be not only essential on how we, you know, communicate and how we live our lives, how we have our personal computer with us, but how the economy is going to work. And I think that has been the role of the industry. Um, and when we got to 5G and continue down this path, which is to enable not only a network, uh, which will play the role of connectivity, but also be an essential element of how we think about the future of the economy and AI come right in the middle of this. When you think of AI, um, what, what's the role of the operators? There's always a debate on the operator side as to, you know, they think they should be playing a certain role. Uh, you're a strategic partner of all these operators and handset people. What is your view of, of their role? Look, I have... Um, a very clear view, and we've been talking about this, um, and it has been uh, really from more than a year, we've been talking about the role, how AI is going to develop, uh, it's, got, it's going to develop. I want to go back a little bit, and, and if you look about the revolution that we have seen with smartphones, and, and a smartphone is the most cloud-connected device that ever exists. And if you take the connectivity out of the smartphone, it's not as useful. And, and what we saw with the development of computing is computing always started uh, in, in the centralized computing, in the mainframe, and into the cloud. It evolved to also to the distributed computing. And with the network in the middle, we created one uh, very large computing. Um, and when we look at what's happened with AI, AI started developing the cloud, and it is going to continue to develop in the cloud. You see some of the growth projections, but it's also developing at the same time uh, on the computing devices that exist at the edge, both for consumers, the smartphone, as well as other machines. And we see this future when AI is hybrid. And when you do AI at the edge, 
for example, in the phone, there's a number of phones that go launched here at MWC. It's all about Gen AI use cases. Uh, we, we did something very interesting this year. Uh, every year we talk about the advancements we're doing in 5G. We are, we announced a new 5G modem, which is the most advanced modem in the industry, the X80, but we also announced the AI Hub, which now has uh, almost uh, 80 models available for developers to develop different applications for phones and other, and, and we're gonna see this development of the AI happening at the edge very, very fast. When you do it at the edge, you do it for other reasons. You wanna run pervasively, you want the privacy, you want reliability, and there's some other use cases. And the edge can provide the cloud a head start or make some of the queries a lot more specific and a lot more accurate because the phone, for example, knows where you are. The operator role is right in the middle. Uh, and, and when you think about the future of those uh, AI's uh, evolution and use cases, you're gonna need connectivity. And you're gonna need connectivity even more than you have uh, required today. And some of the things we've been talking about 5G, about the ability to have that connectivity to be reliable with very low latency becomes even more important. I remember in, back in, you know, an, every generation of wireless go about 10 years. And we were talking about, of course, uh, we launched 5G as an industry ahead of schedule. We launched uh, in 2018. And we'll be talking about at that time that in the 5G decade, uh, we will see, like we saw in 4G, the development of 4G and personal computing, we'll see 5G with AI. When we talk about that in the industry, a lot of people said, I don't understand the connection. I think people understand it now. Yeah. And I think operators have even a more important role to play going forward. Let me ask you a very specific question. I've always been curious about this. Um, you talk about the operator's role. You have a huge workforce at Qualcomm. You have a lot of really smart people looking at all this. How do you actually interact with operators? Um, um, look, one of the things that I think Qualcomm has been very proud um, uh, is how we had, since the very beginning of our company, uh, actually our company was placed in the map because of the relationship of operators that saw the potential of the technology that we created to make a bet on Qualcomm. We, we thrive on a successful operator community. And I think when the operators have ability to invest in the network and to invest in their customers, it creates actually the ability for the Qualcomm innovation uh, to hit reach consumers. So we spend a lot of time, I think, talking with the operators worldwide. Actually, some of the things I'm going to present today in this conversation is how we're responding to some of the operator needs. But we find that dialogue with the operators extremely important for the success of this industry. Well, keep going as, as to what you wanted to, to talk about in terms of Yes. So, you know, when, in general, uh, one of the things that I really like, and I saw, you know, was the presentation uh, made by Matt, I think some of the remarks uh, made by the chairman of uh, China Mobile, I think how the, the operators are looking at the evolution of their network. And, and one of the interesting things when we talk about Gen AI, and we all see a lot of the use cases right now, when you talk about large language models, large visual models, you see some photography use cases, you see some search use cases, some of the things that started to appear. But the, the opportunity is very vast. And operators are also part of that transformation, exactly part of the transformation of the operators with AI. So we're doing some very interesting things. And I, I wanted to talk about that as a lead into how the networks are evolving. But we're doing some very interesting things, thinking how do you apply Gen AI to the operators? And in the operator network, think about this uh, live, very dynamic network that is connecting multiple types of device and traffic. And think about creating a digital twin of this network and applying uh, Gen AI models to redefine even how you think about uh, the operation and the management of the network. So one of the things that we have with, that we have been showing some demonstrations and leveraging some technology we develop um, in the cloud, you can process the data that comes from the network in the digital twin 
and you can apply a large language model. And some of these examples I actually share on the screen is how actually you change the way you interact. You could, you could even from a phone, you be able to ask things about the network and take action to the network. And I think that has a very good connection with this conversation about making the network open with APIs and some of the opportunities that exist. So I see um, incredible opportunities for Gen AI also to change how the operators run their business. And it's not only at, at the operating uh, you know, network operating center, even for example, when you think about what happens in homes, uh, Gen AI on a Wi-Fi access point can allow you to analyze traffic and have slicing at the access point level when, when some of the operators have also on a wireline extension. So I think it's a very promising future with technology and I wanted to usually we talk about some of the examples and benefits of technology for consumers. There's been a lot of things uh, happening in the show, but I thought it would be good to show an example also from an operator perspective. Well, actually I'm beginning to hear more and more people talk about the impact of AI for the operators, not necessarily directly for the consumers. So I think it's good that you raise that. We have two CEOs who I'm going to talk to very, uh, very soon after, so I may ask them to respond to some of this yep. things that you said. Very uh, good. What, what are the other innovations you see coming down um, post 5G? Yes. You know, the obvious uh, and easy, I think, uh, answer to the question is, after 5G, there's 6G. Now, uh, it's interesting. I think there's a lot of debate, and, um, and I'm going to be a little bit provocative. Uh, Please. Uh, there's a lot of debate. Um, you know, I remember, I remember in the early days of 5G, I think the conversation was, please don't talk to us about 5G. We just deployed 4G. We have to monetize 4G. And now it's, please don't talk to us about 6G. Um, the good news uh, is that I think 6G, which is coming, I think it's usually we have a new G every decade, so 2030 is not that far away. But the good news is it's been built on the 5G foundation. So actually the lot of the investments the carriers are doing for 5G come to 6G, and 6G is it's a, it's a whole new concept. That's the reason I chose this example to provide before about a Gen AI use case for an operator a digital twin of the network. What happened is the role of the network was to connect uh, all of those different devices, first people, then about everything. But think about this network as now this live thing that you have all of those things connected and that is the network in itself. And now you have the ability to have sensors and have the ability uh, in the network to understand what's happening in real time and you apply AI and I think that's the fundamental how to think about 5G, an all sensing uh, uh, connectivity network and I think that's built on top of, uh, of 5G and it comes as this convergence of 5G and AI. I think it's an exciting future, if anything, will continue to create new opportunities for operators to monetize the network. And, and here is, here is a, an, a comment that I would like to make. It's a little bit of a call to action, but it's not unique to the operators. It's across every single industry, even our own company. We have to always transform ourselves. One of the fastest growing business for Qualcomm has been uh, this new computing space, which is the automobile. I think you see what happens with the new cars. So you see the EV in China. You have a whole different uh, product, which is now incredibly digital. The car is connected. The car is a new computing space. In car companies that historically was not digital companies are becoming digital companies. They are learning new skills. You see all of the car companies hiring software people. And I think that's true also for the operator community. This network is becoming extremely powerful when you have those sensing capabilities, you have the ability to support mission critical services, uh, be a part of, uh, of uh, from manufacturing to retail to healthcare in addition of consumers. And I think the operators are also going to have developed the capabilities how to explore this technology and monetize the technology. So I think we all together on this journey and, and I think that's how uh, the evolution of 
5G is going to materialize. In the final minute, we have, we have two CEO, two operators sitting here. If you were pitching them, what would you most want them to take away from what Qualcomm is doing that, that affects you know, a very large operator in the Philippines, a very large operator in India? Yes, I heard this uh, very interesting term in a meeting yesterday, that, which was called uh, computility. I thought it was very interesting, which is, uh, you know, the network is it's also becoming a computing engine in addition to connectivity and sensing. And uh, I think operators need to continue to move forward with this idea of an open network with APIs and embrace uh, Gen AI. I think Gen AI is gonna change the user experience on devices, is gonna change the user experience on, on PCs, are gonna make PCs more connected. Uh, it's going to change uh, how you interact with your car, you'll be able to talk to your car. It's gonna change industrial, and it's gonna change how the network business is run, and I think, don't wait. Does AI need 5G, or can it be an effective tool on 4G? AI needs 5G. Uh, I would argue that uh, 5G is essential for AI to scale. Okay. I have one last thing, I know we're running Please. out of time, but, uh, um, you know, one thing that I saw in the presentation from, uh, from Matt, he talked about, he gave two data points, I think his presentation here today. 56% of all the connections are 5G. He also showed many reasons the operators are moving to 5G standalone. So, it's a natural thing in the industry. You want, uh, especially when you think about the value of spectrum, when you think of all those capabilities, you wanted to continue to migrate users. Often you hear operators saying, I want to load my 5G network. So one of the things I want to present today, as operators are moving to SA, I want to give you another reason uh, for you to move to SA. I think there is, the we thought about Qualcomm, and that's something we are doing, it's a new chipset we are announcing, is can you create a gigabit experience? And that's. That's what 5G was created for, to provide at a minimum gigabit level service. Can you create a gigabit experience with a smartphone sub $100? I think most operators say right now smartphones are in entry level at $200. And uh, as you go SA, there's ability to do that. Uh, you see an opportunity to go from 56 hires, and many operators that are deploying 5G in emerging markets have an opportunity to switch their base. So I want to use this opportunity at GTI to give you yet one more reason to go to SA. Craig, thank you so much for the opportunity. Mr. Thank today. you always. For thank being. you.